place among the dark arms of the woods. In arrow laced with love I never understood. There, there is a heart in here. Where, where is the heart in here? Silence me, love to me down to the river to silence me, love to me down to the river to silence me, love to me down to the river to silence me, love to me down to the river to silence me, love to me down to the river to silence me. Constance Markovich was born on February 4th, 1868, in London, England. Constance was an Irish nationalist, labor activist, and feminist. She fought against the British in the 1916 Easter Rising. She refused to compromise with the British and chose to fight for a united Ireland. Constance moved to County Sligo, where she grew up at her family's estate, known as Lizardale. Her father, Sir Henry Gore Booth, was a wealthy landowner. Unlike many landowners during this time, Henry treated his farm tenants with respect and concern. His generosity shaped Constance to be generous as well. She also learned a sense of adventure from him. Constance was the first of five children of Henry and his wife Georgina. Constance had a sister named Eva that later became a figure for women's suffrage and the labor movement in England. Constance was presented at the court of Queen Victoria in 1887 and then soon became an art student in the Slade School of London at the age of 25. Constance did not stay long in London. She eventually moved to Paris and attended Julian's School of Arts. Here, she met a man by the name of Count Casimir Markovich. The couple was married within a year. They soon gave birth to a baby girl in 1901 named Maeve. When the Count and Constance eventually moved to Dublin, Maeve did not go with. Maeve was almost entirely raised by Constance's mother. Constance's early days in Dublin did not link her to politics or even Ireland's independence. However, that soon changed in 1906. It seemed as though a life of painting for Constance was not going to be enough. As a young girl, Constance wrote in her journal that nature should provide her with something to live for and something to die for. Constance found out very quickly that there was political turmoil going on and in her heart, she knew she needed to fight lived, and maybe even died for it. Constance soon became a member of Sinn Féin. She became a huge advocate for it to take more direct action against the British. Constance also got involved with women's rights. Constance and her sister Eva had always been feminists. At this time, Eva was living in Northern England and fighting for improved working conditions for women and women's suffrage. Because of Eva's involvement, Constance became more interested in socialism. Irish nationalism, women's rights, and socialism preoccupied the rest of Constance's life. We can't give in. In 1909, she founded an Irish nationalist version of the Boy Scouts. Her mission was to raise boys to become Irish patriot soldiers. She even coached and prepared some of the boys for titles in the coming revolution. Count Casimir rarely supported his wife with her political desires. Their marriage eventually ended, but Constance continued her political ambitions. She became even more active in helping the poor in Dublin. She supported the unions and unemployed workers during the massive lockout of 1913 in which Dublin employers tried to break the union power once and for all. On August 31, 1913, a huge group of policemen attacked a large crowd of trade unionists. They killed two people and injured more than 450. Markovich was one of the many that was severely beaten by the police. 
Despite the awful attack, the lockout continued into the winter until the last of the men were forced back to work. In 1914, there was a general army for battle in Ireland. The Republicans in Ireland began to form volunteer armies of their own. Markovich helped a man by the name of James Connolly organize an army known as the Irish Citizen Army. Constance and the radical Irish Citizen Army saw themselves fighting against Britain, not for it. In the eyes of the British, Constance was now looked at as a traitor. Becoming more involved in the Irish Citizen Army, Constance helped plan the 1916 Easter Rising. Two men by the name of Tom Clark and Sean McDermott led a secret military council known as the Irish Republican Brotherhood. The men allowed the leaders of the Irish Citizen Army, including Markovich, to prepare with them. Here are some of the actual notes that Markovich wrote for the Easter Rising. With a thousand men and women armed, the IRB seized the General Post Office, the College of Surgeons, the Law Courts, and other public buildings. They then raided Dublin Castle, where the British administration was stationed. There they declared themselves the provisional government of the Irish Republic, and raised a tricolor flag of orange, green, and white over the General Post Office. Constance also designed a flag that was green with a gold harp on it. Within a week, the British had the rebels into a submission. Constance was arrested and imprisoned. She was court-martialed and sentenced to death. But because Constance was a woman, her death sentence was changed to life imprisonment with hard labor. The British were worried that Constance would become a rebel leader in the Dublin prison, so they moved her to a prison in England. She suffered through poor conditions and starvation while in prison for a year and a half. She was eventually released earlier than her initial sentence. She returned to Ireland and was greeted with welcoming arms. She was elected to the Sinn Féin Executive Council. While she was in prison, the revolutionary movement grew to nearly 100,000 members. In response to her actions toward the British, they arrested Constance again, along with the other party leaders of Sinn Féin. Constance remained in prison when the First World War ended. The Prime Minister Lloyd George called an election. Sinn Féin ran her as a candidate and she won. This meant that she was the first woman ever elected to the British Parliament. She was one of 73 Sinn Féin candidates to win seats. But rather than choose the British Parliament, they constituted themselves as the Irish Parliament. In March of 1919, Constance was released from prison. She once again jumped right back into political activity. Constance was arrested for the third time in County Cork for rebellious speeches. When she was released, Sinn Féin was considered illegal. Constance spent months on the run moving from place to place. Her running eventually led her to her fourth arrest which landed her in Mountjoy Prison in Dublin. After she was released from Mount Joy, there were negotiations in London between the Irish Parliament representatives and the British government. The British decided that they would only declare Ireland a free state as long as it was still within the British Empire. The Irish negotiators accepted with great disdain. Constance was very against the compromise. Constance, at the age of 54, found herself living on the run and in prison yet again for her fifth time. She was a member of the Free State Parliament for the last years of her life, but could not take her seat because she refused to take the oath to the King of England that was required. In June of 1927, Constance became very ill. She was diagnosed with peritonitis and died soon after, on the morning of July 15, 1927. 300,000 people attended her funeral, including Count Casimir Markovich. Throughout her political activism, Constance fought with courage and never second-guessed her beliefs. She has inspired generations of Irish women and men throughout the years, and she deserves endless amounts of recognition for her exceptional involvement in Irish politics throughout her life.
For her courage and acts of kindness, Constance will always be an unforgettable revolutionary woman.